Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Justinus uh, Yurkornis from Swedbank, um, from Open Banking uh, Unit, and today I would like to share with you um, one of my feasibility studies, what I'm uh, leading now, and uh, some insights uh, about that uh, share with you. Uh, uh, first, uh, as use case, we took uh, for, for the blockchain, like uh, feasibility study, we took uh, use case um, for alias payments. Alias, I mean, uh, just to explain in short, uh, uh, it's an uh, alternative attribute for IBAN, a uh, bank account, to map with uh, some, it can be like phone number, social network ID, it can be email, whatever it's uh, agreed. So to map uh, this uh, into the alias, like, and as you students, I want to make a payment to someone else. And I, uh, just as, as money sender, need uh, to know just a beneficiary's phone number, for example. And sending uh, very easy and very fast, uh, like money. That's all. So we took this use case as a first one and uh, looked around. Like in Europe, there is uh, alias proxies. Uh, they are, those payments uh, are working in the country, like in Sweden, uh, Swiss, uh, PAYM is in UK, uh, MBWay is in Portuguese, and uh, Pingit for Barclays, yeah, more, but uh, anyway. So the question for us is uh, what we will uh, do, what, uh, which uh, pro proxy alias we will take for uh, the Baltics market, and uh, what is the issue between, uh, let's say, uh, those uh, existing now uh, <coughs> alias proxies, so they do not uh, communicate between each other. Let's say it's not possible to make a payment uh, between Swiss and uh, Portuguese. So there is an issue uh, with uh, interoperability. Uh, so our thought is how uh, Baltic states, Baltic market, to, to make uh, one single uh, proxy alias, and maybe it is possible to do on the blockchain. So uh, this year we started a feasibility study. Actually, we started uh, under the name like Sweet Alice Proxy on Blockchain, but uh, after the event, uh, at the end of last year, we had a um, Swiss conference, uh, Swedbank uh, ran a uh, hackathon, and actually we got uh, five proof of uh, concepts working already on blockchains. Uh, just a technology proof that it's possible to do. So we uh, took it and uh, then uh, continue. Because uh, already we understand that uh, the main issue actually it is uh, how, the, uh, it can, how does it work like with legal environment. As a technology, yes, it is possible to do, to put, uh, let's say, this analysis on uh, the, the public uh, blockchain to store it like and to reuse, but how does it uh, reflect uh, if we will take into account legal environment? So uh, uh, GDPR uh, key principles uh, we identified. Let's say three key principles um, that um, uh, it's really like challenging uh, blockchain adoption uh, into in, in, into the market. So actually, um, this uh, stored personal data cannot be without end date. Uh, right to be forgotten and data design uh, protection by design and by default. Those three actually principles were, as I can say, a headache uh, for us as well in the beginning. So uh, here I would like to share that um, together with uh, some external uh, experts, some blockchain and legal uh, experts, uh, we started a few iterations and we started with the most uh, known, let's say, those uh, public blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and started like to analyze uh, how it is possible like to do this and um, to make not just a architecture uh, like a solution, but as well from legal, uh, how does it look like in legal environment as well. So uh, finally, we end up that uh, with blo public blockchain, if we are putting any personal data uh, in public blockchain, so actually we won't comply with GDPR. Uh, data, uh, fundamentally GDPR technology says that already stored some data into uh, distributed ledger, it's already in immutable and you cannot like change. So it means um, that not okay from GDPR perspective because uh, data will be stored uh, by uh, identif identifically like time. Uh, as well as it is immutable, uh, there is no options uh, to be forgotten, like to erase this data, to change it, uh, and etc. So also it's not uh, like okay. And uh, even seems if you 
uh, there is, let's say, opinion maybe uh, that uh, if personal any data like is somehow encrypted, hashed, like and stored like in uh, those public blockchains, so maybe it is like uh, okay, and we can say that it's compliant with GDPR. But actually, we we got the opinion that uh, it is still personal data. It needs like to treat as personal personal data and. Uh, uh, it's uh, very, very challenging to do. From business per perspective, we understand that um, uh, also counted, let's say, uh, <laughs> some, some, mid, uh, some cal calculations that are, it's uh, very expensive or uh, you cannot control costs of uh, service uh, running costs. Uh, it means that in public blockchains, uh, transactions approval time is not known. It depends on uh, those who verify uh, those transactions, and as well, each day it can change uh, the transaction price. Different in different uh, blockchain network, it is uh, like changing. We had, let's say, in history, we saw that, uh, let's say, transaction for Bitcoin price was uh, close to 50 uh, United States dollars. So to put one alias into the for storing can pay such amount of money, it's uh, not efficient. And uh, looking from use cases perspective, we understand that technically, even uh, if uh, the personal data is somehow hashed and stored into public blockchain, it is very difficult, challenging actually, to find uh, to uh, make it uh, to make searching for a particular like uh, entry into the blockchain. So what we didn't find into the public blockchain, actually, we uh, find uh, in uh, this uh, private one, permissioned blockchain. And um, mm, because uh, data access is shared or data access is, uh, to, to this is uh, permissioned to those uh, participants who are in this blockchain, particular, particular uh, private blockchain uh, uh, network, uh, we found the way how with uh, decentralized identity uh, stored information can be uh, compliant with uh, GDPR. As well, it's uh, based on our uh, indicative, let's say, calculations or information. What we get, it's um, more cheaper, let's say, uh, to, to have the solution than in comparison to, to store it on public blockchains. And as well, it's important thing that uh, if you are in this participants uh, of this private uh, blockchain, you, you can influence the future roadmap and somehow control where this uh, blockchain will go in the future, what additional features, services, and etc. will be developed. And as well, uh, what we saw from our use cases is that uh, there is a searching like uh, options. So, yeah. Uh, so, Basically, European this regulation, data protection, general data protection, uh, actually is very restrict uh, itself the adoption of uh, blockchain-like technology, as we see, and the potential uh, what is possible like to do and uh, to uh, start uses. But anyway, we see that uh, there is like a possibility to collaborate with uh, third parties to think in a new way and to find the solution how to use uh, the blockchain technology anyway, and to get the benefit from this uh, open banking, uh, all, all, all the, uh, what we can get. So uh, after that, finally, we understood that uh, we started with a very simple, and from our side, it seems that very secure use case, just storing the phone number and customer IBAN into the blockchain. And uh, finally, we understand that uh, after this, we are actually building already infrastructure, blockchain uh, platform for data sharing between the financial institutions. So uh, once you will develop this network, later on you can reuse it for other services. Yeah, you can start with this one small step, make this uh, step, check what's happening around, and then to think about uh, what we can do next one. So as um, it is uses open source code uh, for it is very easy like to develop. It can be done uh, not just by the members or participants of uh, the uh, private blockchain, but as well from uh, third parties, fintechs, uh, others who are interested, like and they can uh, provide this uh, additional features or develop it. So it can be KYC, e-commerce, some uh, feature services, government services uh, related with companies regist registrations and etc. And finally, maybe it can be like done for identity. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>